Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today is a nasty, cold, rainy day here in Florida. So today I'm going to show you how to use some of your cast iron in combination to make a great comfort food dish. So stay tuned. So what we're going to be making today, guys, is a great comfort food dish. And I guess you can classify this as a frittata since we're going to be using a bunch of eggs on this thing. And what we're going to do is step over here real quick and we're going to grab our 12 inch black lock cast iron skillet. We're going to be putting that over there on the sportsman's grill. You just seen us put the coals on. We're going to use that as our heat source. We wanted to do this on a campfire, but it's been raining all day so that ain't gonna happen so and also i'm gonna bring over the lid from the 12 inch lodge dutch oven to finish this up so this is gonna be kind of a little demonstration of how you can use different pieces of your cast iron gear to accomplish what you may not be able to do so great in just a dutch oven just a grill or just a pan we're going to combine all three of those to make this come out perfect. So here are the ingredients we're going to use for our frittata. Now these, all these ingredients are optional. Okay. Uh, like I said, we're doing this for dinner. If you're going to do this for breakfast, the ingredients might be a little different and um, definitely would be a little different for me. But anyway, we're doing this for dinner time one. It wants to be a uh, sweet, savory kind of thing. So here's what we're going to use. And obviously if you don't like any of these ingredients, substitute something else or just leave it out all together all right folks we had we brought out the old sportsman's grill this guy's been uh, um, not on the channel much lately been tucked up under the table over there we brought it back out today cleaned her up a little bit it gave her a little re-seasoning I got some uh, royal oak uh, lump charcoal going in there this right here okay uh, get us a good amount of heat and today we're not using it for a grill we're going to be using it for a stove so let's go ahead and just start taking and getting our black lock pan right on there better start getting preheated so like i said before we were going to try to do this over here on the camp ring for you guys right out here but um man i woke up this morning to mist and drizzling rain uh still uh, it's blowing under here now it's full nor for full, full nor uh easter going on and uh it's actually blowing rain up under the summer kitchen here or the outdoor kitchen so we're gonna have to stay tucked up over here believe me it feels a lot better over here by the sportsman's grill where i got a little little warmth going on so so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to go ahead and flip my grill here for the very first part of this cook to get that grill and that pan a little closer to the fire and if you guys want to see our video on how we modified this grill slightly so that i could use the dutch oven lid lifter for it I'll try to leave you that link in the description box below and please check out everybody that we support down there in that uh, description box so let's go ahead and put in as with any good cast iron cook first step starts our friend bacon
So today's video is not really about the recipe we're making here today. But I'm just going to show you this as an example. But it's more about thinking about how you can use your different cast iron pieces in conjunction with each other. Today we we'll use the Sportsman's Grill. We use the Lodge 12 inch Dutch oven camp lid on top of a black lock skillet. So just think about that when you're trying to figure out how to make your cast iron dishes at home. And just remember, almost every single dish we eat now, 200 years ago, was cooked on cast iron. So now that our bacon is starting to render a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and put in some of our sweet potatoes. We may not use all of these. I want a little space left in the bottom of the pan. So I'll probably use about maybe three quarters of what I have there. So I told you guys we're going to be using a combination of different parts of cast iron. One, we have the Sportsman's Grill. Two, we have the Black Lock. 12 inch skillet. Now you could use any of the 10 inch Lodge products also, but you're going to need your 10 inch Dutch oven lid. But today we're using the 12, so I'm going to use my 12 inch Lodge Dutch oven lid. Capture some of that moisture in there. That's a really nice heavy lid, and that's really going to help the sweet potatoes cook a lot faster. So while our sweet potatoes are getting going over there, we're going to go ahead and crack our eggs. And one thing I did forget to mention in the ingredients before, we're going to use some whole milk, okay, or some light uh, cream. That would be fine also. I'm just going to go ahead and these right out of our hen house. So if you give a little bit of shell, just use the edge of your shell to get that out. We have our six eggs cracked. I'm going to put in maybe two, three tablespoons of milk. Go ahead, just whip those up really good. Now, I'm not putting any seasoning in this right now, just because of the fact that I know that my my sausage we got going in next is really heavy on seasoning, and that's going to bring a lot of that seasoning over to the whole dish. So we'll check our seasoning at the end. That looks really good right there. Let's go ahead and check it on them. Stir them once already. They're, these are going to pick up color really fast with a lot of sugar in those. And that's kind of what we want. Alright. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and bring in some of our sausage. And use a fair amount of it. This was about three bratwurst that were taken out of the skin. Like I said, those are really high in season. Let's go with all of it. I'm going to cook down a little bit. That's going to pull a little bit of heat out of that thing. But the color on those sweet potatoes is looking just about perfect where I want it. That little bit of brownness on them is going to bring out the sweetness. We'll make sure that sauce is all nice and chopped up in there. Go ahead and get that lid back on. A few more minutes. One paper towel with a little bit of olive oil. About a half a chimney. More lump charcoal. Go ahead and get that started. So we're about 
eight or nine minutes in right now. And I think that sausage, bacon, and sweet potatoes is looking pretty good. We got good bottom heat going right there on that. Getting some, so we're gonna go ahead and put, dump all of our rest of our ingredients in. Mushrooms, garlic, and broccoli. Again, all these op are optional ingredients. All right, those are going to start releasing a little bit of moisture. Now we may have to decrease the bottom temperature. If we do, we'll just flip the grill over on the sportsman's grill. But let's go ahead and let them get up the temperature real quick. We don't want to cook those all the way to mush. So now that our eggs have been hanging out a little bit, we want to just go ahead and just whip those really good. Now I want them to be very, very nice and frothy. I want to get that whisk in there and really spend a little time on this part right here. It'll make your eggs puff up and be light and light and fluffy. That little bit of milk we put in there. But you want them to be nice and foamy before you put them in. Flip that grill over, get a little higher off the flame, and that is looking really awesome. I see those sweet potatoes are really nice and tender. We don't want to overcook the broccoli, mushrooms, or any of that stuff. So right now we're going to go ahead and see us whipping up those eggs. We're going to find a little whip, and we're just going to pour them evenly. the eggs on. It's a good time to go ahead and just put on cheese. Some uh, Colby Jack right there. I found that doing this the same time we put the eggs in seems to work better. I put as much or as little as you like we're going to put a lot. I'm going to go ahead and put that little clump right there. Let's break that up. Lid back on. Now, you've seen us light that second set of coals. Let's go ahead and bring those right back over on top of the lid. Just like that. That will help to brown that cheese and finish up our eggs. Not a lot. Try to push it out to the edges just a little bit. And that's a combination of using the skillet with parts from the Dutch oven and a sportsman's grill to accomplish what we wanted to do. Go ahead and plate this up back with gourmet style. I got a couple of romaine lettuce leaves I just picked right there out of the garden. Let's go ahead and uh, 
open this get the bad boy up. It's steaming hot. Man, does that look good? Cut a slice out of it. It's beautifully pulled away from the pan. Okay. Let's see, if the first slice is always the hardest one to get out. But believe me, you want to buy that. I know you do. Right on top of our deal there. A little tiny bit of Seminole Swamp Season right over top. And there you go. That is a savory dinner frittata done in cast iron right over there on the Sportsman's Grill. In there and get a taste as always mrs. backwards always gets this display plate plate but um, you know I usually just go right in there in a pan man you want a bite of that I know you do let's give it a try mm. savory hot rich this very kind of thing you want on a nice cool day like today or any day for that matter really really good and we use a combination of the sportsman's grill the cast iron pan and the dutch oven lid to make this turn out beautiful mm. so if you like what we're doing please smash that like button right down there for another great backwards gourmet video it's gonna be right up there to subscribe to our channel i wish you would it's gonna be right over there and for a whole playlist of cast iron and Dutch oven cooking, it could be right up there. We'll see you next time.